Welcome, everyone. We are so glad that you are joining us here today for this round table. I'm Athena Laz. I'm the author of The Alchemy of Your Dreams and The Deliberate Dreamers Journal. And we are so excited that you are here watching this with us. Over to you, Teresa. Thank you, Athena. And I'm super excited to be here too. It is, forgive the pun, a dream come true. <laughs> I had to get in there, but you know, dreams, they speak in puns, don't they, as you know. I'm i am um, a dream author, um, best-selling dream author. My A to Z dream dictionary has been stocked all over the world. I have been pioneering dream research since the early 2000s, and I will continue to do it in this life and the next if there is one. I love dreaming, everything about it, and I hope I can share my passion with you in this summit for dream decoding and dream research and everything related to dreaming. And I'm now going to pass you to my beautiful co-host Kelly and Athena you're beautiful too <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Teresa and Athena it's such a pleasure to be co-hosting the DreamWorks Summit with you I'm so honored and excited so for those of you who don't know me I'm Kelly Sullivan Walden some people call me Dr. Dream I am the author of about 10 books and most of those are on dreams I had the strangest dream it's all in your dreams a couple of chicken soup for the soul books dreams and premonitions and dreams and the unexplainable. And I am so thrilled to be with you all and to be a part of the summit, to be part of the energy that's being conjured and some of the breakthroughs and the insights. I am so clear that they are going to shift people and it's exciting to be with all of you. <laughs> I am loving this dream summit and it's it is it is again to repeat a dream come true because I have been writing about dream decoding for a long time I write many books in the area of mind body and soul and dream decoding is one I'm most well known for but I also work closely with scientists researching consciousness and neuroscientists researching consciousness I'm passionate about promoting the importance of research into what's happening in the dreaming mind so one of the highlights, there have been many highlights of this summit for me, has been inviting scientists and neuroscientists to talk to me about their fascinating research. And one area in particular I'm very, very interested in, because I co-authored a book with neuroscientist Dr. Mossbridge called The Premonition Code, is about the ability of dreams to perhaps glimpse a potential future. I find that wildly exciting because whenever I do dream talks, because I do many, and conferences, almost always the majority of people say to me, I've had a deja vu moment where I was in a room or a situation or I said something or heard something and I dreamt it the night before. And that's where I'm going with my dream with writing research now is looking into precognitive dreaming. And um, another highlight is I have the time loop author, Derek, Dr. Eric Wargo. Um, I have um, uh, and two precognitive experiences as well who are really exciting. One of them is actually someone who is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, um, a founding member of the band Blondie, Gary Lachman, who is now a precognitive dream expert and author, does talks about it all over the world, as well as Timothy Schultz, who is a powerball lottery winner and he's fascinating because back in 1999 he had a dream he was going to win the lottery and he did to the tune of 28 million now we hear these stories but to actually have someone telling you the experience of that dream and how it changed their life and what to look out for in precognitive dreams I think is a, a golden opportunity but alongside that I've invited parapsychologists, people who are teaching dream research at university, psychologists, um, again, scientists, and just, um, I, 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 it's very hard to not mention everyone here because they're all amazing, but there is a special place in my heart for Peter Sterling. <laughs> You're going to get a relief from me talking because uh, one of the beauties of that session is he's going to play from his Hark Dreams album, which was number one on the radio, international radio chart. So that's a real treat. And he tells me how his dreams inform his music because the link between creativity and dreaming is so strong. You know, people write novels, um, you know, create movie scripts, um, all sorts of things come from the dream state. and then. 
Another thing I'm going to mention is, is um, afterlife dreaming. I have um, uh, the world's leading experts in that, uh, Dr. Julie Baishaw, who conducts, conducts research at her Windbridge Institute into afterlife dreams and their potential for healing in the grief process, along with parapsychologist, Dr. Callum E. Cooper, who also has um, done extensive research in this area. I, I'm trying to think of other things, but there are so many other surprises in store, not to forget Bauer and Dinesh, who are reminding us of the absolute fundamentals here that we all need to get a good night's sleep. Because if you don't get a good night's sleep, your chances of dream recall and working with your dreaming world are next to none. I could talk forever, as you're probably gathering, but, you know, I, you know, I will stop now and pass it over to Athena. I'm in such agreement with you, Teresa. It's hard not to want to mention every single person who has been invited onto the summit. I think that's what leaves me feel it leaves me feeling in awe is the fact that every single person who has joined is an expert in their field, is a great dream teacher, and everyone is so generous with the information that they're sharing. And in a time in the world where everyone is feeling quite uncertain and even hopeless, everything that's come out from a lot of the conversations that I've had is this deep, expansive hopefulness and ability to dream a great, beautiful, peaceful future. So I've had wonderful conversations with Incan shamans, the Incan shamans Aliandro Apaza, and Betty Tuero, and then I've had a great conversation with Dr. Andrew Holchik, who comes from a Buddhist and dream yoga perspective, offering us a completely different and entirely new pathway to dreaming for a lot of people. There are just so many people to mention, Dr. Sharon Blackie, who offers her perspective from myth and the pathway of dreaming and how that can benefit everyone. Sandra Ingerman, Paul Levy, the names go on and on and on. So it's just there is something for everyone and all pathways lead us back to dreaming. So over to you, Kelly. I'm even more inspired about this summit after hearing what's been going on in your worlds, Athena and Teresa. It's This is such a remarkable moment. It does feel like a tipping point moment. There's so much, by contrast, there's so much chaos happening in the world and it's like despair is is at a record high and and yet whenever i'm in this when i'm in the summit when i'm having these conversations i feel like it opens up a portal to such great possibilities and such solutions and it's like einstein said you can't solve a problem with the same mind that created it it's like the dreaming mind has the solutions it has the way out it has the antidote it has the answered prayers that we all have and i'm finding that by interviewing each of these experts most of them i've known over the years but these conversations are different i'm learning so much from them and i think i know a lot about dreams i've written a bunch of books on the subject but I'm finding myself taking notes and knowing I can't wait to get these recordings. I want to play them back. I just um, just had a conversation with um, Robert Moss, who is a great, he's, he's one of the most celebrated dream experts on the planet. I call, I refer to him as a living legend. He never ceases to just baffle me and, and inform me and inspire me. And um, Robert Wagoner, a lucid dreaming expert who's written several books on lucid dreaming. In fact, I have to say, because of the conversation I had with him, I had the first lucid, big lucid dream I've had in a long time as a result of just being in his conditioning field. It's so exciting. So there's a lot of Roberts here. There's Robert Moss, Robert Wagoner, Robert Haas from the Dream Science Foundation. So I love that we have kind of the aspirational, we have the future, and we have the very grounded science. There's a lot of science right now that that proves a lot of the things that we of the body, mind, spirit world have known intuitively, but it's it's being proven. And so there's so many other people I can I can talk about. Um, Barbara Bain, there's it's it's remarkable. Michael Mead, mythologist and anthropologist of the soul, Michael Mead, there it's just packed with inspiration, practical tools that whether you're a beginner, 
intermediate or advanced, there's something for you. All aspects of me are being inspired by this summit and I can't wait to share it with everyone. So I pass it back to Teresa. Ah. <laughs> it's fun to do oh, this. I do feel like Alice in dreamland. I really do. I mean, you have to imagine, you know, like the two of you, this is what we do with our lives. And we have devoted our lives to researching dreams, writing about them. We get messages from people who want us to help them interpret their dreams. We go on do media and radio and TV. But to be have the opportunity here to talk to you two now... And then to reach out to all these people that I've been longing to connect with and have a, an interview with, um, it's it's bliss. It truly is bliss. It's um, been an incredible experience. And uh, really, I hope that every session gives people something, as you say, to think about dreams in a new and surprising way, because that's the power of dreams, their ability to surprise, as well as to right. heal comfort comfort guide and inspire dreams can surprise they teach you what you don't already know and so everybody I think who watches these sessions is going to learn something new about themselves and I hope by the end you will just realize how incredibly fascinating you are your dreaming mind knows that already but a lot of us sometimes need reminding of that and thank you you two for reminding us all, you know, that we live in a very uncertain times at the moment. And um, we've had the pandemic, there's uncertainty in the world. But through all out that, we've had our dreams every night to try and help and heal us and to offer us comfort and hope and inspiration and illumination. They're always there for us. We all want a best friend in life, someone who tells us the truth and is always there. And we've got that in our nocturnal wisdom um and um <laughs> you know um i love what you said kelly about you know wanting to go away and take notes after each session because i found that i don't know if you have too athena but when you're talking to these experts because i have my take on dreams as, as you you know we all have our perspective but to learn about other perspectives too and to bring it all together in this way it's it's again i'm gonna it's illuminating it's inspiring. Athena, have you found that? I've absolutely found that. And it's been such a bliss because I think when you do this work, it's easy to forget that you can dive into many alternative pathways and there's always something deeper that you can go into with dream work. And exactly what you were saying earlier, that your dreams really are your best friend and they can speak to you in so many different ways. And I think that's what I've loved most about the summit is the way that they speak to so many people in so many different ways. And every time you hear a snippet of insight or advice that you maybe aren't aware of, it adds to what you know, and then your dreams can speak to you in that language too, which for me is incredibly profound. So it's been absolutely wonderful connecting with everyone in that way. <laughs> have you found that you've been dreaming bigger and better you know I, I mean my dreams have gone crazy since I've been doing this because I'm talking about it even more <laughs> and I'm getting tips from people that were new to me have you found that Kelly in fact yes I it's you know it's strange because mostly my life has been pretty consistent with dreams lots of dream recall every day but over the pandemic for some reason I've had a harder time. I've had, it's been harder to sleep. It's been harder to dream. I feel like I'm processing too many things. So it's, it's been a little, this has been probably the hardest time for me over the last couple of years, but since I've been participating in the summit, they've come back and they're clearer. And in fact, um, without going into too much detail, um, I had a big loss this week in my life. Personally, my dog Priya passed away. And it was devastating. And because my dream recall is bigger right now, I got two dreams of her last night. And and it's and I'm I'm blown away because I say this all the time that when we're grieving over a departed loved one, nothing heals more than a dream. And how sad it would have been if I missed those dreams, if I didn't recall them. I mean, I teach this. And I forget it though. I forget how powerful it is, how 
I can be healed. I got to tell my husband about the dreams and he's gone from like so glum to, I could, he smiled for the first time all week. So it's like, it's not just the dreams for the dreamer, but when we pass it on and pay it forward, our dreams are healing for our families, for our collective, like nothing else can. It's so efficient. It's so smart. And I think we need, we need this now more than ever. It's, it's not just, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's, it's optional anymore. I do want to give one little maybe warning about the summit. Like if there was a disclaimer, it's like, Mm -hmm. Don't be a participate in this summit if you if you want to just take your dreams lying down. Like it's going to get you so excited about dreams that you're going to be excited to go to sleep. <laughs> it's like all the <laughs> exciting things in your waking life are going to pale in comparison to to what goes on at night. So just a warning. I had to put that out there. What do you what do you what's your favorite part? What I, <laughs> what do you you're tapping into something I just here? You thought of a great great promotional um tool, you know, the cure for insomnia. <laughs> We send everyone rushing to their duvet covers, you know, right. that they want to go to sleep and have these right. dreams. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm so sorry about your loss. And um, thank you. I know dogs have a way of, 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 of finding a home in your heart. Um, they are our soul mates. All pets really are. And it's an unconditional love. I feel it's like spiritual almost. And dog is God spelt backwards. And actually, you'll love my session with Charlie Morley because he's oh. got his his dog and he brings his dog into it. And my dog, <laughs> so, you know, it seems like is it something with dream people that, you know, their pets are, are very important to them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, have you got a pet, Athena? I have a cat, so um, oh, move wow. over, dog people. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I wrote a book called Psychic Cats about you know cats that heal people because I've written many many books about the spiritual. So that it's just cat dog. It's it's the way they are a soul companion through life mm-hmm. because they give us. There's something so wonderful because however you feel, they're so excited to see you, and that's such a boost self esteem isn't it i'm sorry how come we Go can't train off. people to do that that that's another <laughs> seminar that's and that's the next level of dream work how to it's train your unconditional <laughs> expansion <laughs> well in some in some strange way though i find this i find in doing dream work we do people do change i mean when i when i work on dreams as, i mean when i pay attention to a dream that's that's pointing toward a conflict in my life I find that by paying attention to that dream and doing the work that it seems to want me to do, the relationship changes without me having to go to so much trouble on the physical plane. It just feels like so much can get done with our dreams that I think would free us up to have more fun in our waking lives. So there is a lot of healing. And I think I just want to focus. I want to dream incubate training my husband to be more like how my dog was. And then maybe I won't miss my dog so much. Oh, sorry, but I, I'm, I'm sorry to bring laughter in when I know you must you must be it's going part to of it. Dream. No, I'm. But dreams helped people. So many people during the pandemic as well, because there's so much grief and loss, and I got so much messages from people who nothing was helping them, and then they had a dream of a departed loved one, and it brought them a sense of, you know, death ends a life, not a relationship. That's what these dreams show. And we can continue in spirit, the afterlife, if you believe in that, it's entirely your personal choice, that dreams show you that it is possible to carry on that relationship. The physical form has gone, but spiritually, you know, they carry on. I I always like to say that we dream with our spirit and our psyche. And like you say, you know, Teresa, that is, you know, it's a personal choice, So it's really up to the person. But what I love about what's just come up here is that our relationships are always, um, we are never alone and we are so connected and our dreams remind us of that nightly. And so we tend to feel the gravity of that a lot more in times of mourning or crisis or loss. And that's when we pay attention, when we know that that dream is so big and powerful and meaningful because 
we're in pain and it soothes that pain. But really every night we're pointed, well, in my belief, we're pointed in the right direction because I really think we are one and we all connected. So if there are people on the other side of the world in pain and suffering, sometimes we can tap into that in our dreams and then take helpful action in waking life. And so it's just so powerful and something that we can all do so easily and there are absolutely no barriers other than our intention to sleep well and bring some reverence back into our sleeping uh, states and to be open enough to dreaming or at least that's my opinion on it. I, yeah. I just jump in there Athena and Kelly because what you were saying um, reminded me of a conversation I had with, with Lloyd Auerbach he's a parapsychologist um, who shot to fame after the Ghostbusters movie actually does a lot of dream work he wrote a book Psychic Dreams and he talked to me about this phenomenon of people who are intuitive and uh, in their waking life a lot of them have spiritual dreams where in their dreams they're actually going to the scenes of disaster or trauma and they're kind of spiritually offering healing he calls them sleep worker dreams where you are so sometimes when you wake up exhausted in the morning right. maybe your spirit or, or soul has done a lot of healing in the night and it makes sense because if you are that kind of caring person in the day you won't stop when you're asleep so that carries on um it's a beautiful right. point you made thank you about mm-hmm. that <laughs> Well, I think we could talk about the summit together forever and on a parallel plane, just like in dreams. Let's keep talking about this. Let's keep exploring and bantering because I don't think we'll ever get done. I feel like we're all riding a rocket toward the future, a very exciting future and a very exciting time for humanity. And I'm so honored to be joining you, Teresa and Athena. And I just know everybody watching this is going to love the summit, the DreamWorks Summit, Awaken the Power to Clarify Your Desires, Heal Wounds, and Liberate Unconscious Wisdom. Can't wait to see you there. The thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the summit, but I, I want to go and watch it. And I've never been involved in a project where I've done that. I mean, actually, I, I do a lot of media. I, I've become fairly well known in this area now because I've written so much about it. But I never actually watch it back because I kind of move on. But with this one, I want to watch it. I just want to binge like a Netflix series. I just want to go and watch every single session because I'm learning. Um, it, it's a very humbling experience as well. It really is to to learn from these masters, and they all are. Every I wish I could have mentioned all the people that we're that I'm, I've interviewed, and I know you two have as well, because all of them are dream masters, dream experts, and they're all so giving and generous as well of their time. It's they want other people to understand the passion for dreaming that they have and why dreaming matters because one of the questions I get asked a lot I don't know if you is is well isn't waking life difficult enough you know can't we just switch off when we go to sleep and you're telling me I've got to you know be concerned about that and just trying to flip that perspective and show no it's the most natural and beautiful and healing and empowering thing you can do to to fall in love with your dreaming mind because it's exactly the same you don't stop being you when you fall asleep do you you carry on in an alternate world an alternate reality where anything's possible, infinite possibilities. And one more thing, I talk a lot, so please jump in you two, is the fun element of dreaming. I have done kind of a a humorous session with a stand-up comedian (laughs) um, who talks about how dreams declutter the mind, you know, erotic dreams, bizarre, nonsense dreams, which are totally crazy, and how important they are for the light relief they can sometimes bring, because they make you see things back to front, and also make you take yourself a little bit less seriously, and I think that's important. Dreams have a way of doing that, Um, you know, have a lightness of spirit, Uh, as well so I think the fun element I hope that comes across um the fun because I have fun talking to you two and I can just tell your sessions are going to have a fun element as well as being serious I will shut up now oh please (laughs) never on a parallel plane don't ever shut up I'm just thinking about um the wizard of oz a h h s I also call him king dreams a lot Walter Berry he has a book out called drawing in the dream and he talks about 
the power of drawing your dream. Even if you are like me, who has no artistic talent in that way at all, but stick figures. And I've noticed, I've learned so much from him and he is hilarious. He is a hoot. And <laughs> I, I challenge you, I would pay anybody a million dollars. No, just kidding. In dream dollars, if you don't crack up during that session. So yes, I, I love what you just said, Teresa. There is a lot of joy. There's a lot of humor and levity, but it also leads to deep, powerful insights. What about you, Athena? What what tickles you about dreams and the DreamWorks Summit? Uh, I just completely agree with what you've both said. It's amazing how the summit has opened up the doors to both laughter, joy, but meaning and insight. And every single person that I've had the opportunity to connect with and speak to, incredibly, including the two of you, which has been so wonderful, um, has just offered something so beautiful in the pathway of dream work. And I think anyone who's watching this, who wants to have or wants to experience more clarity in their life or let go of something that they've been trying to work on in their waking life that they haven't managed to do, then dreams are such a beautiful pathway to explore a new avenue of wholeness and well-being and joy and laughter and I think that's where a lot of the lucid dream teaching stuff at the moment can come in where you can experience exhilarating emotions in that dream space and um, if you learn some really helpful and basic techniques which I know a lot of the speakers have shared um, over the summit so the, the you know the opportunities here are endless and limitless in my opinion and fun and meaningful so I mean what more can you want you know I mean it's like you know <laughs> you mentioned lucid dreaming of course Claire Johnson I had a fantastic conversation with her you know to help us all you know, dream a little bigger, darling, you know, from the Inception movie. <laughs> I love that. And she brings her gong out and I'm, I, and she gets, she does this wonderful meditation where we, literally I was, I'm the host and it was very difficult for me because I went so relaxed in such a liminal state, you know, the, that twilight state between waking and sleep. <laughs> it was very hard for me to sort of like sort of return to, to everyday reality, but um yeah, I, I mean, what what a what a blast, ladies! Aren't we aren't we lucky? We are so lucky. lucky yeah, um, I feel like I was already uh, a fan of dreams. I was already an enthusiast and obsessive, and I feel like my joy and my appreciation of dreams is is taken to a higher level. And I didn't know that that was possible. So I thank both of you for co-hosting this with me and for wrangling in such a vast array of eclectic and powerful speakers and experts. This is amazing. I'm so honored to offer this. And I am so grateful to be doing this with the Shift Network, such a powerful platform. So this is going to be great. Can't wait to see you guys there at the DreamWorks Summit, <laughs> Awaken the Power to, cl to Clarify Your Desires, Heal Wounds, and Liberate Unconscious Wisdom. So see you guys there. Sweet dreams. <laughs> and I'm just going to say um, your dreaming mind loves it when you pay attention. And I think just watching each of the videos, the sessions will trigger dreaming because where your attention goes, that's where your dreaming mind will, will you know, reward you at night. So pay attention to your dreams. And if you do have a dream, one really good tip I'm going to leave you with is to the next day, try and um, mirror it play it out of it for example if you wore red in your dream make sure there's a bit of red you know your cardigan's red or your your you have, wear something red because your dreaming mind loves that because it shows that you are taking notice because it's trying to be get your attention for decades the dreaming mind it's very subtle and it's been trying to reach you and a lot of us because we're so busy and we voices of logic and reason drown it out the dreamy mind's been trying to send messages but we often ignore it because we think oh it's just a dream but it's not just a dream it's so much more it's your nocturnal wisdom it's your inner inner wisdom giving you a healing and empowering message and um i really really hope when when you watch these sessions that you have incredible adventurous exciting surprising dreams and those dreams never stop that every night you know you fall asleep and then you wake up in the morning and you can't wait to reach for your 
dream journal. I really hope that. And you two, absolutely, I'm so humbled to be with the two of you. You are names that I know and 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 really respect. And uh, the Shift Network as well. What a team of dedicated spiritual people. I I I've not had that experience as well. And I feel I'm plugged into a dream network now that we've created something. Athena. <laughs> I was just about to say the same thing. I really feel like we are plugged into a dream network and it's been such an incredible pleasure, not only meeting and connecting with the two of you more deeply, but getting to birth this incredible dream summit with the Shift Network who have been so incredible. So for anyone watching, you know, your dreams are speaking to you every single night, exactly like what Teresa and Kelly have just mentioned. And the messages are there and waiting for you. So all you need to do is just watch the videos and enjoy. Sweet dreams. We've got to say it. Sweet, Sweet dreams. dreams.